Hey everyone, this is Josh from ACWW, and today I'm doing a special video. I've actually been waiting on this for somewhere around the neighborhood of a year to come in. Um, today what I'm going to be doing is actually the first unboxing that I've ever done. And I am going to be covering Replicade's uh, Centipede. It's a 1-6 scale, fully functional, fully playable game. This is based on Centipede. It has a full wood cabinet, uh, natural little trackball, as well as even just the light up red volcano buttons that Atari would be putting on their control panels. But this is a fully licensed product, uh, completely through Atari. This is game one out of so far three. Uh, three hasn't been released yet. It's still in prototype version. Um, but anyways, I still have the box here. I have not opened it up. I have no idea what to expect other than I'm hoping it is everything everyone talked to be up to. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and crack this thing open. Let's see if I can get the shot here a little better. Now I will have to uh, eventually cut this video and come back after I have charged it. Uh, they do chip these with the battery completely exhausted on it. So, got a little bit of paper in here. Oh, another box. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that out of there. Alright, you got a warning label on each end here just saying that it does have a lithium ion battery. But uh, if you see here on the box, it actually says Replicate X Centipede. And these are individually numbered, or were supposed to be. Um, I'm not for sure if mine is. I'm hoping it is, but they were... We, if you back the Kickstarter back around a year ago, you actually were able to get a, uh, a numbered version, which, it, I, if I recall correctly, it was supposed to have a little um, number on it, kind of like the old Atari cabinets did. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this box open here. As you can tell, we've got another layer of cardboard in there. I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. Stick that off to the side. Oh, cool. That's a pretty neat packaging, guys. Right there is the front or back of the box. I'm not sure what orientation I'm actually removing this. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this here quick. Now, now on the bottom, they've got another little piece of cardboard. I'm assuming that's to keep it from uh, cutting the packaging or anything like that. But now it is fully out of the box. It is 11.8 inches tall, made out of wood construction. And it has a lot of the details here on the, on the back of the cabinet. But as you can tell, it's uh, actually got the real wood cabinet, official arcade ROM, and it also saves the high scores. Uh, let me go over a couple of little bit of features here on the package. It says uh, arcade accurate six scale upright centipede cabinet. Plays the original centipede arcade game. Uh, there's a mini trackball control. Wood cabinet construction. Illuminated marquee and cabinet accents. Dynamic mono audio reproduction. Metal coin door with storage compartment. And they actually gave the Kickstarter backers some little miniature coins even. As well as I've got an additional um, little package in here that for Kickstarters only you actually get a light up Atari coin slot keychain um, but anyways we've got has high uh, high res art reproduction on quality vinyl overlays non-volatile memory saves the high scores once again uh, it's got a built-in rechargeable battery three and a half inch color uh, LCD screen in a vertical orientation PVC trim molding in a limited edition cabinet. Uh, it comes with a charge cable, uh, the little replicate mini tokens, and an owner main. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this bad boy open here. And one more, one more time here. I'll show the packaging before I uh, move it out of the box. As I, as you can tell, that it is fully licensed by Atari. There's the little trackball, matter of fact. Um, but uh, yeah, this is Replicate Amusements, which is actually a sub-company of New Wave Toys. Uh, they've made toys over the years, and this is just kind of their, their new little line. They actually have a Tempest coming out, which I also backed, and I will do a review of as well, hopefully whenever it comes in, which that should be quite a few months yet. Uh, that one was just started, I think, about six months ago. So I probably have around six more months to go before I just do this 
fail with it. So I don't damage any of my packaging here. Bear with me. That's a crinkly plastic covering they got on them. So I'm going to tear it off. Noisy stuff. Get out of here. Alright. Okay. So it looks like the uh, box orientation is, is you actually are going to slide out of the bottom. As you can tell there, it's kind of coming out of the bottom. Take this cover off. Alright, set that off to the side here. And then inside, you've got a white foam cover. And that is just a thin little layer to protect the actual game. And wow. Wow, already this is looking pretty cool. Holy cow. This is actually a little nicer than I thought it was going to be. Um, before we go into the actual game here, I'm going to go ahead and set that to the side. But uh, right inside here, you've actually got a nice little packet. Uh, it's got the user manual as well as the uh, charging cable, which I will pull these all out and show you here. All right. And right here is the user manual. Uh, it's actually kind of thick. It must be in multiple languages. That's exactly what it is. So you've got different languages. That's Dutch right now. Or French, I'm sorry. But uh, non-color inside, but color outside. Uh, it just kind of goes over your controls, uh, what the package contains once again, um, how to play the game, how to charge it, navigating the actual built-in menu uh, that is kind of like a graphic overlay interface for the um, actual arcade ROM itself and warranty and their customer service and everything like that's kind of contained in there um this is just a basic usb micro plug and it's about uh looks like it's going to be about i don't know i have to guess three foot or so um plenty enough to charge it and then right here is they actually gave you some little six scale quarters <laughs> go into the little the little coin box storage compartment that's inside of it so Get four of those included with your unit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. And as you can tell, there's a quick little glance at it. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over because the actual keychain that the Kickstarter backers only receive, um, the back side, I, was, I watched their unboxing and I want to make sure I get it out of there. Oh, cool. And see now... Also, I was, uh, it was brought to my attention, oh wow, I might have to talk to them about that. They actually formed the plastic into my keychain, as you can tell there. But this is very heavy, very heavy. I mean, it's just like the, it's all metal, just like the real one, and it actually, you can push it in, and it lights up. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to just come on and push it. If you're supposed to be able to push it on and it stay on. But anyways, I think that might just be some adhesive. But that's a neat little keychain. And it looks just like the old con uh, coin entry bezels that are right back there on my arcade game. As a matter of fact, those are both Atari games right there. Um, but yeah, this is all metal construction, as you can tell. i keep it focus there. But it's actually got a brushed fi finish on the outside as well as uh, a textured metal finish in the uh, outside there. The front um, Now, I do know that the Kickstarter backers get this gray one, which is uh, kind of similar to an original, like, but almost aged finish. And then they had a version that was actually black. It was a black finished one. And I believe that was just for if you were to buy the keychain by itself, uh, which was part of the, of the Kickstarter. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back panel back on. There is the foam that contains the game. Put off to the side as well as the back piece. And right here is the arcade game. I'm going to go ahead and slide down the plastic wrapper. This actually got some pretty good weight to it. Quite surprised. But uh, this is a full wood construction, just like the actual arcade game. And cool. 
There was 1,400 of the backer editions, and I've got number 721. And I'm going to go over the features here in just a moment. I'll get a little closer here for everyone. Now, they do say right here it's charged before play, but uh, you've got the little authentic Atari coin door. Looks just like the original. Now, the coin return buttons on this are actually buttons for the menu, uh, which is kind of ingenious. And then you've got your little latch here where you can actually rip it. Ah, let's see here. I've got, I have no fingernails. I apologize. There we go. Anyways, on the inside, there's a little storage compartment. Right there, and as you can tell, there's the two little button receivers for the menu buttons and everything. Um, the control panel. You've got uh, your actual little, let's see here, your little trackball, which, wow, rolls very, very smooth. Wow. That, that, wow, that feels better than the actual trackball from the arcade game. But anyways, you've got your little fire button here. Um, that actually feels like a little arcade button. I am well impressed with how everything feels. Um, now the the little buttons here for your player one, player two, you can see that they do actually have the little red volcano buttons on them and they do light up just like the actual arcade game. Um, but you can feel that they are just like a little diaphragm switch. Um, anyways, to the back of the cabinet here, you've actually got your volume controller as well as the power button to power your unit on. Um, there is the speaker back here on the back side of the cabinet, which I'm not for sure. It looks like that hinges. It must be for the charge port. Or maybe that's just part of the molding. Not for sure. I'll investigate into that later. Uh, but they actually even molded in. Oh, okay. I see what it is. That's, that's a little molded lock like it'd be on the back door of a, uh, an actual arcade cabinet as well as a lock. Um, but as you can tell, it's got the little sticker that very well reminisces, or re reminisces, I'm sorry, <laughs> the uh, Atari serial number labels that were given on the original arcade games. And then down here at the bottom, you've actually got your little charge board. And uh, let's see, on the bottom of the cabinet, you've got a Replicate Amusements kind of uh, glossy embossment there, as well as New Wave Toys and the little uh, licensed Atari Centipede logo. Um, the artwork is actually a nice matte finish. I'm not for sure how much you can tell there, but uh, wow. <laughs> Get that to kind of blend in, and it almost looks like I'm holding one of my arcade games. <laughs> That's too cool, because a lot of the old 80s uh, Atari games actually had the same profile as the Centipede, uh, my Dig Dug, my Warlords, my Asteroids Deluxe. They all had a pretty much similar uh, profile, other than a little bit of the uh, changes, let me move here, a little bit of the changes to the actual cut of the sides of the cabinet, but the control panels and everything else were, the general shape of the cabinet was very similar, but uh, it's actually got a textured um, key molding on it that is actually really reminiscent of the actual key molding, it, it appears that it's actually almost got the same texture, but a very fine form of that leather texture. Um, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and remove this plastic off the screen. And this is kind of tricky, so be careful doing it. Wow, that's a nice glossy screen. Very nice glossy screen. And it's done up with all the original arcade graphics and everything. So, one more thing before I uh, switch to after I charge this unit is it's actually got some really nice rubber feet to keep it from sliding around. I did notice though there is uh, there is a few little mishaps in the construction. Um, nothing big. I don't know if it'll even be noticeable on my camera. Let's see. But there's there's actually a little bubble underneath the artwork right here. Um, like maybe a piece of something got stuck underneath it. And then I also noticed on the top uh, top little edge of my key molding. And this side is, let's see, see there, right, right there, it's kind of lifted a little bit, bent to bend, which I, I'm, I'm almost being nitpicky there, but for these units costing as much as they do, I, I, it kind of bums me out that they didn't have that done to them. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, aside from that though, this is just an absolute identical, well, one sixth replica of the original arcade game. And that is just awesome. So, anyways, guys, go ahead and set it up there again uh, with the arcade row. And that's hard doing in a camera. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Right there. Down. There we go. So, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and charge up this unit, guys. And I will be back with you in just a moment. All right, guys. Josh back here again. Um, I actually was reading through the manual here. And it does state that you can actually use this unit while it's charging. Which is actually a huge plus for this unit. So, as you can tell, when the unit is in charge mode, you actually have your volcano buttons lit up solid as well as your coin door lights to let you know from the front side that the unit is charging, as well as a charge indication light back there. Which I'm assuming this would go off after it's fully charged, but you also have a meter on the screen that if you just tap the power button, it shows you a little graphical button there, or graphical uh, battery there on the screen showing that the unit is charging. Now, in order to power this unit up, you actually have to press and hold the power button for five seconds, uh, which I will do here in just a moment. All right, so we're going to go ahead and show you the startup sequence of this unit, um, and let me know what you guys think. All right, here we go. Got a wonderful little New Wave Toys logo there. And then the marquee kicks on. Let me see if I can get that to focus there for you guys. And it is an awesome print quality. Awesome, awesome. But as you can see there, it is under license from Atari. And I'll zoom in on the screen here. And it should boot right into the game. And I apologize for the uh, lack of focus. That's just here on my camera. But anyways, we're going to head got the audio turned all the way up and uh, I will show you guys a demo game here in just a moment but I wanted to cover what the buttons do here and you've got right here on the front door you've got your right coin door button and that actually causes your menu to come up which you have adjustment for your backlight um, come on pick it back up all right there we go you've got adjustment for your backlight brightness for your screen You've got a on-off for the, uh, oh, come on. you got an on-off for your marquee light, as well as a low, medium, and high adjustment for your trackball. Um, to adjust, adjust your settings, you actually just use the left coin door button, go down to close, and then you actually use your shoot button to select it. I know you guys can't see it, but anyways, the unit does have a few credits on it already. Um, but the screen is just awesome quality, guys. If it wasn't for my camera, I would show a little bit better video. Um, but the colors are on point, very bright, very vivid. The greens are green, the purples are purple. And it's about as perfect as it can get without having a, a little CRT in it, which we all know that's not going to happen, let's be real. But anyways, to start a game after you've used the left button here on the coin door to credit the unit up, you actually just, uh, let me switch sides here, you actually just press the player one button, and that's what's going to start your game. And I'm going to go ahead and try and play a game here. Well, but the trackball just feels so awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and try and, I know you guys probably can't see this very well, but the game plays a lot easier than you would think on a 112 unit. Or 1-6, I'm sorry, it's 12 inches tall. Oh, and the last guy got me. But anyways, this is an awesome game, guys. I can't wait to sit down and actually play this. And turn down the audio so it's not drowning me out. But, uh, yeah, the sound on it is awesome. It's a nice mono sound, like it says on the uh, packaging. And I'm assuming the high scores on the screen are actually going to be the developers of the game itself. Maybe when they were playing and testing, or maybe the testers themselves. I'm not for sure. But, uh, yeah, I just can't get over the niceness of that marquee. That is, that is very sweet looking. The control panel, very accurate to the original. As well as, I'm not for sure if you'll be able to read this. But, uh, come on, camera focus. Let's see here. The 
can actually see the text for the, around the bezel. Kind of gives you the game rules and what you have to do to play the game, as well as every all your enemies and everything like that. But this is just a wonderful unit, guys. If if you don't want to have to try and shell out the money for one of these real ones right back here, and you don't want to take up the room, uh, these units are wonderful. And just so you guys know, this is not a paid review. Um, I actually backed the Kickstarter. I'm just a large lover of arcade games and thought this is a wonderful product or product for any sort of people that want an authentic arcade style um, you know and even there's guys out there that like the one sixth figures you know that they could set up little scenes with these things I personally buy them just because I like arcade games and instead of the little cheap Walmart ones that you get you know for 20 bucks or whatever they are don't don't play the art actual arcade ROMs they play, play like the Nintendo ROM or something. It's just very inaccurate. Um, but these actually play the 100% accurate, authentic arcade ROM. I'm trying to show as much as possible. We'll get one more shot here of the marquee. Come on, adjust for me. Uh, there we go. What an awesome unit, guys. What an awesome unit. Only other thing that I have noticed is that front is a fingerprint magnet, but that's the least of my worries. Awesome quality artwork. And I recommend you guys going out and checking out Replicate Amusements. Um, check out their projects. They've got pictures of their Tempest, which they're still, still in production, and uh, a little bit of development left, as well as a prototype Street Fighter II unit they're going to be coming out with that will have a wired um, little controller so you can still play two players with your friends. Um, but it's also going to have uh, the little arcade buttons like this right here for you to play on the actual machine um, and I probably will be backing that unit as well I love these little units uh, they're wonderful little wonderful little guys here but anyways I appreciate everyone for tuning in this has been Josh with ACWW and also if you guys don't know me from other places I'm also known as the PS1 addict and I appreciate everyone for tuning in to this wonderful unboxing this is the first one I've ever done like I said so please forgive me if I've left out any details. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Click that subscribe button and be sure to check out their website. I will post the information in the description below. And everyone have a wonderful day.